what do you want to happen with your body after you die? It's not something people normally like to discuss in their daily life, but well, unless you know something I don't, it's an inevitable situation that we will all face one day. We only really get to make this decision once. And I feel like it's a really important decision because it's a reflection of who we are and how we've lived. A decision that for some might come at a moment's notice, like for Jessica Winningham and her family when her father unexpectedly passed away in 2016. Coming from a Black Southern Baptist family, her father's experience with funerals were much different than what he would have wanted. I would describe Black Southern Baptist funerals as very theatrical. As a person in theater, there's a lot going on. So amazing loud music, dress costuming, I would say. So like when my um, great grandmother died, she left instructions that everyone was to wear white. All women were to wear white on that day, and there's always an open casket and a processional around the casket. I mean, it's just a lot of rules. And my dad, who is on that Black Baptist side, but is Jehovah's Witness and does not subscribe to that religion, told me he had always had a dream that when he passed away, he wanted my brother and I to steal his body, put an apple in his pocket, and bury him illegally so that he wouldn't have to be in a casket and go through the Southern Baptist ritual and we would just find him by that apple tree. And as a younger person, I was like, yes, of course. Fast forward, um, my father passes away from a massive heart attack. I get a call in the middle of the night and I'm driving to my mom's house and grief is a really odd thing. And I remember your brain thinks lots of really odd things. And I remember one of my first thoughts being, um, how am I gonna steal his body? How is this gonna work? And then my mom was like, you know, Bell Fountain Cemetery does something called Green Burial, and I had no, never heard of it. I had no idea what she was talking about. And she had described it, and I was like, well, that sounds perfect. When you hear Green Burial, a common thing that comes to mind is being turned into a tree after death. And while it's a bit more complicated than that, as we learned at Bell Fountain Cemetery, it's about as close as you can get. Green Burial isn't necessarily a new process. It's really going back to the basics of how burials were, you know, hundreds of years ago. Sherry Smith is the president and CEO of Bell Fountain Cemeteries, a non-sectarian historical cemetery founded in 1849, whose 314 acres give a park-like setting. This emphasis on nature makes it very fitting that Bell Fountain is one of only two cemeteries in St. Louis that offer options for green burials. Sherry explains that the average person seeking information for green burials has lived a very natural, environmentally conscious lifestyle. For some people, you know, you hear them say, I, I don't want to be laid out in a funeral home. I don't want people to see me. I, um, I don't want my family to spend all that money on, you know, the, the big casket or the, the big procession or all of those things. I mean, what we don't want is as important as what we do want. Uh, I had someone explain embalming to me before and I decided nobody's doing that to me. You know, this is not something I'm interested in. So for Marshall Peel, not wanting to be embalmed was an indicator to seek information for alternatives. Which, since we're on the subject, some might think of embalming as a traditional process, but it actually wasn't widely adapted until the Civil War era as a way to keep fallen soldiers' bodies preserved to be transported back home to their families. So it's a fairly new implementation to burials when you look at the grand timeline of human existence. Just over the past two years, the rediscovery of interest in natural burials has more than doubled because of the environmental benefits and affordability, which cost about half of the average modern day funeral. Cremation has also been thought of to have these benefits, and while its impact is better than the large amounts of chemicals released by traditional caskets and embalming, cremation still emits large amounts of carbon dioxide. All of this background information was shared with Marshall and his wife while they were attending a green burial class offered by Bell Fountain, which is how they decided this was a more fitting option. I had this idea that somehow what gave me the right to take up this piece of six foot by three foot by whatever it is 
uh, site on this earth when I'm only here for a fleeting moment. Uh, this is the way people have been being buried for millennia. And uh, it seemed to make a lot more sense to us to do it that way. And in Green Burial, there is no hard casket, uh, at least no casket that is a traditional casket um, of the way we think about them in funeral homes today. Perhaps what should be buried in Green Burial is really a more traditional casket of years gone by, and, or no casket at all. There's a homemade biodegradable shroud. Um, it could be colorful, it could be a reflection of that person's personality or life. And, and we put in all hand cut greens and flowers, whatever seasonal from our grounds. There's a bed of that laid in, then the um, deceased is laid in on top of that. And then it's covered again with another biomass of flowers and greens. You're buried more shallow than you are in a traditional burial because of the microbes do better at uh, the depth, which I think is four and a half feet rather than six. And a lot of times the families want to participate in that process. They want to help put the roses in or the, the evergreen in. And then they've even wanted to help fill the grave. And so I think it's closure at its finest and it's personal. It, it's so many times I've been to a traditional funeral of a loved one and, and you leave there and the casket's still sitting there and you get in your cars and you drive away. And a green burial process is much different than that. The sections that uh, we chose that you're buried with no marker. Uh, and that actually goes back to my earlier thinking of um, in, and everybody knows in two generations, nobody knows who you are or knows who you were. So what makes the point of, of carving your name in perpetuity? I suppose it's not been part of our um, heritage to go to the cemetery. And I don't know if that's a societal change or an, in, or an individual change, but um, assuming somebody comes looking, <laughs> that they, they're, if they came to Bell Fountain, they can tell you where we are. Um, it's through the magic of GPS coordinates. There are two meadow-type locations in Bell Fountain where green burials are offered without a headstone, but you can actually have a green burial anywhere in the cemetery. And while it may be a minimalist wish to be buried without a marker, some might appreciate having a type of memorial, like Jessica and her family. It was like this perfect dream come true moment that I'm really fortunate and grateful to have had. We showed up and it was just like a very peaceful, beautiful ceremony. And we did get to do um, what my dad had wanted. We got apples from Eckert's and everyone took a bite out of apples and threw them in. So he did get his apples buried with them. Well, and my dad, um, God love him, was not a planner. Um, there was no will, there were no instructions. I mean, it was a mess. And so all we had was this word of mouth promise, but that was it. Um, so yes, I think had there been a clearer plan, it would have been even easier. Had this not happened, my brother and I especially would have really struggled with the rest of our life of having put him in the ground in a way he did not want. Um, there is a great reluctance, I think, to come to terms with the inevitable. Death is a curious thing because you don't experience it and then come back and talk about it, so we don't know what to expect. And I feel like when you make your choices about end of life, it shouldn't be that way. We should know what to expect. The way that our culture is so scared of death and so allergic to it, we don't think about it, we don't want to think about it, but it really does put a burden on the living. My only wish is to be as least burdensome as possible to everyone, including the Earth, and I feel like this is exactly what that is. For Living St. Louis, I'm Brooke Butler.